Thanks for taking the time to speak to me today. I really enjoyed Barefoot. It's a very powerful, very beautiful, unique film, and it provides a, a different perspective on, on the environment. You know, a lot of times you hear politicians going back and forth and fighting about it, but this is a much more personal take on it. Mark touched a lot of people through his life. Uh, can you tell me why you think people connected to him, why they gravitated toward him? Who was Mark? Yeah, well, I could just kind of start off by saying that, uh, you know, as the filmmaker, I, back in 2016, you know, I was just a fan of Mark's. He, I found his videos online and he was walking barefoot across America to protest climate change and making these videos every single day with this amazingly humorous persona um, and a penchant for the absurd. And, you know, the New Yorker likened him to Andy Kaufman and he had this childlike wonder about him and this kind of guerrilla style filmmaking that he was doing on the road by himself. Like, so I was just very inspired by him and I liked that new take on environmentalism from a sort of performance art perspective. Uh, and became a fan and, you know, had hoped to connect with him at some point and collaborate. Uh, and then sadly, he was killed on the walk in 2017. And, you know, it was the day after Trump's inauguration. Um, so, of course, it felt, you know, extra symbolic to lose such a powerful environmental activist while Trump was rising to power uh, and Trump being a climate change denier. Uh, so I reached out to Mark's family, his parents, Jim and Mary, uh, and had, you know, hoped to create a tribute uh, to Mark's life and tell his story and, and was just really fortunate that Jim and Mary were uh, up for that and amazing collaborators through that. So where did Mark's passion for the environment originate? Is this something that you can pinpoint in his life or was it the way he was raised? I think it evolved over time. He um, he had a job as an intern. I think it was following his uh, graduation from Wheaton College in Massachusetts. It was a it was a short stint, uh, but he was working for this uh, organization that um, his job was to collect all of these newsletters. Uh, it was around kind of almost like waste management. The company that he worked for. And he would read all of these newsletters and he got really uh, caught up in recognizing just the just sheer volume of plastic that was being produced and dumped into the ocean. So Mark started off by realizing he didn't, he wanted, he was trying to eliminate plastic in his life. So he'd go to the supermarket and before he would check out, he would take everything out of the packaging and pretty much take it in as raw a form as possible. He stopped using plastic bottles. You know, he, everything he tried to do was around the focus on, on plastic at first. And then, you know, as he obviously began to study the issue, you know, he, he recognized that he could live without a, an automobile. Uh, he pretty much walked and ran everywhere. If he had to travel, his choice of travel, if he had to tr travel like long distances, he really preferred not to fly. There were times that he did fly, but if he had the option, he would take a bus instead because it was less, you know. So all of his decisions really began to be sort of uh, fed through sort of the prism of, you know, how can I minimize my carbon footprint, you know, and he probably had the smallest carbon footprint of anyone I have ever known personally. You know, I feel like Mark's carbon footprint was, uh, he was doing his own carbon offset program for all of the rest of us, you know, so. Julie, how did you narrow down the hundreds of hours of videos to a, the hour and 27 minute running time? It, it seems like a monumental task. What was your process? Yeah, you know, I'm not only a documentary director, but an editor too. So uh, it's a lot of work on the editing end. And, you know, with Mark, he was so prolific. His YouTube channel, he, you know, had a decade worth of videos on his YouTube channel. There were about 500 videos. Uh, to go through, but specifically with the Barefoot Walk, there were a hundred videos for the hundred days of the Barefoot Walk, as he would create a video for every day. And so I think that was, you know, seven hours of Barefoot Walking videos. Um, and I think it was just 
about trying to tell a sort of linear narrative that would allow the audience to go on the ride of the walk from a sort of chronological point of view. You know, we don't really get to his death until the third act because I wanted people to focus on his life and his journey. Um, and so I think that's what drove my editing choices. You mentioned his sense of humor, uh, which is constant and undeniable throughout the film. Uh, where do you think that originated? Did he take after one of you? Did he have a favorite comedian that he liked? I think it was from both of us. Um, but when Mark was in high school, he used to go out with some high school students and they would just like videotape people on the street in Portland, Maine. And Mark would have costumes and he would have a, his grandfather's briefcase and he would he was just Mark. He was very, he could be very serious, but he could be a jokester. But, and I think, I, I think he got some of the costume things from me because if I'm doing a road race, I like to dress up, but a combination, the good, the bad from both of Jim and I. Much of this film is a celebration of Mark's life and his impact on the world. But there's also moments that must have been tough to go back and revisit. Why did you decide to make the film? Why is this message so important to you? You know, I, you know, I think everybody, if their child were to be killed, you would, you would like people to recognize that they were important, you know, and, and maybe not everybody gets that opportunity. You know, for us, we're very grateful that, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, and, and Julie knows this, I mean, we, we were kind of besieged by other documentary filmmakers very early on, you know, in the weeks after Mark's death. And I think, you know, it's hard at that time because you're truly feeling like, you know, you're about ready to go under, you know, in terms of almost feeling shipwrecked. And, you know, how do you make those kinds of choices? But we tried to think in terms of what Mark really would want in terms of telling his story, you know, if you could almost, you know, find a way of thinking, okay, what would Mark really want here? You know, and I, and I think what comes across in the film is, you know, the things that Mark cared about are front and center in the film. But I think there are also the things about who he was, you know, the, the funny guy, you know, just the very whimsical nature of who he was and, and just kind of, you know, there was, the one part in the film where, you know, he's having a dialogue word with himself, you know, crossing this bridge in Connecticut. And it just made me laugh. I laugh every time I see it. And I laughed the first time I saw it when he did the YouTube video, you know, and it's like, where did he come up with this stuff? And yet, you know, Mary touched on it, you know, Mark, Mark could seem like he was just this totally unscripted guy. The reality is, you know, we got what belongings they recovered at the scene uh that we, they could send to us and there were all these little like notes he had made to himself early in the trip to try to make sure he highlighted certain things so there was a sort of preparation you know that may have come across as unscripted but i think all great artists of some type have some process before i mean granted i mean i'm sure there are people who everything they do is by the seat of their pants but you know, Mark put a great deal of thought into this, and yet, you know, it allowed people to have this sense of, you know, here's a guy that's just sort of winging it, you know, and at times he was, you know. So the timing of the release of the film doesn't seem coincidental. Was it specifically chosen? Sure, yeah. I think we knew that we wanted this film to come out before the 2020 election. I mean, the, the film really gives you a, a nice recap of what was going on in 2015 and 2016 with Trump's rise to power and showing the debates between Trump and Hillary Clinton, showing um, you know, Mark Bomber's reaction to being on the road, seeing Trump signs uh, and realizing that Trump was actually gonna win this thing you know, back in 2016. So I think it's appropriate for audiences now to sort of get that recap of what was going on then um, refocus our minds towards climate change um, in that political context of who do we want to vote for, um, who, who's going to protect the environment, you know, and, and have that be sort of front and center in our minds, um, because obviously a lot of other things have, have muddied our 
perceptions lately. In regards to the election, what do you think Mark's feelings would be about the candidates we have to choose from? It's hard to really know for sure. I mean, I think that, I think in a lot of ways, Mark's message, even though some people would per perceive it as a political message, I really think it's a message that transcends politics. I mean, for, for me personally, um, I, I don't feel as though either one of the corporate parties really have done a great job on the environment. I mean, there's a lot of folks who have put a lot of emphasis on flying all over the world, holding conferences all over the world to say, oh, we need to protect the environment. Well, hey guys, how about not getting on planes and flying all over the world? You know, it's, there's this sort of, you know, Mark talked a lot about it. We nece didn't necessarily agree all the time on politics. The thing that I was always struck by with Mark and in and, and our relationship is, no matter whether we were disagreeing on something, we would always find a way to find common ground. And I, I don't find that that's there. You know, I find people are really polarized. People have this idea. And, and I guess if I could just leave one thought for me personally, there's a lot of similarities right now from when Mark was walking. And I would say to him a lot of times, yeah, Mark, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to vote this year. Mark would say, yeah, dad, do whatever you feel is right. Because I said, you know, and it's not me. I didn't originate this term. But, you know, truly, if, if voting really mattered, if it really changed things, they, they, they'd make it illegal, right? Because the reality is we're going to vote for whoever and somebody's going to win. And it's going to be pretty much isn't going to move the needle a whole. In my life, at least for Mary and I, we're not going to see any because, you know, Mary's been furloughed since March. And we've struggled to pay our bills. I'm working in a job that I really don't love because I have health insurance and I have to have health insurance. We both do. And we've been waiting for either one of the parties to have some agreement to extend the unemployment benefits that were there initially, but they can't do that because they're so dysfunctional, you know, both parties. So I, I don't really want this to be a commercial for Joe Biden, mm -hmm. because I personally can't stand the man, but I also have a visceral dislike for Donald Trump. So what does someone like me do? And I'm representative of many, many people in the United States who every friggin' four years were asked to go to the polls and vote for the lesser of two evils, or as I say, the evil of two lessers. And we do it over and over and over again. And that's a definition for insanity. So I think part of what Mark was trying to say is, I'm going to step outside of this dysfunctional script. And I'm going to do something that nobody else has done. I'm going to walk across America barefoot, like Johnny Appleseed, and see if it makes a difference. And if he hadn't been hit and killed in Florida, he would have made that journey. And nobody else would ever be able to say that probably, that they walked across America barefoot. You know, so... What I want to say about the film and Mark is I feel very lucky that Julie contacted us and the whole crew of putting the film together because we want Mark to be remembered. Um, and that's really important. And also we set up a nonprofit. We want to continue to do good things that Mark would believe in. Um, it is the Mark Bomber Sustainability Fund.org. So you can check it out. And we are continuing to do good in, in Mark's name. And I did want to mention that. I'll certainly include that link on the screen during the video. Um, you kind of touched upon it, but let me expand on it a little bit. What are some ways that we can honor Mark and his life, his mission? beyond the charity that you, you've mentioned. He had these cute little cards made up for the sustainability fund. And on the back of it, um, we put, make a difference, be kinder, gentler, eat more plants, touch earth with your feet, slow down, get involved. Yeah, and to, to Mary's point, you know, we're not, asking or expecting uh, folks to go walking barefoot across the country and 
imitate Mark in that way. You know, he was one of a kind and very bold in the sort of performative action that he took. What we are, you know, encouraging people to do is to get involved in local grassroots organizations, to, you know, consider, uh, you know, veganism and vegetarianism, even if it's one day a week, you know, your meatless Monday. Um, consider solar panels, putting them on your roof. Uh, there's so many things, you know, drive less, have one less kid, <laughs> um, you know, get involved politically towards uh, environmental legislation and protection. So I think there's just so many things we could do uh, better uh, in a manageable way. Yeah, those little changes that you, you bring up might not come to mind because we're so busy or because the world's going to hell right now. So um, any you know little changes certainly will help. I, for one, have never had a meatless Monday, but I'm going to start this week. I promise. Um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you again for taking the time to speak to me today. Uh, like I said, Barefoot is a beautiful film. At, at times, it's it's painful, but at the core, it's, it's quite beautiful. What I really want to do, though, is, is thank you both personally. Uh, whatever you did to, to raise Mark in the way that you did, uh, to make him so passionate and determined uh, to just go out there and, and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take on this mission for the, the sake of good. Uh, we need more of that in this world. We, we need a lot more of that. So thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Steve.